How are you? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for that intro. How's it going? Hey, things are great. I saw your tweet this morning. We can't wait to get you in the Thunderdome. We yeah. cannot wait to see what type of stuff <laughs> you'll be able to do on this court. We're very thankful you made time for us. Let's dive right in what you're talking about. Bye-bye, Barry, tomorrow. Was it an emotional time, kind of reflecting on everything that was your NFL life alongside NFL Films while filming this for its big release tomorrow? I would say absolutely, Pat. I mean, you know, I lost my dad in 2011. Um, he's heavily featured in this doc, you know, talking about, um, you know, everything, you know, from the start of my career to, uh, you know, when I retired. And um, and so and then and then him as well as so many others. Um, but I but 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 I definitely had to fight back a few tears, uh, you know, just see, seeing my dad there. You know, with the game I ran for 2,000 yards, he was there to, to hug me on the sideline and just things like that, just memories like that, um, you know. But, um, but yeah, a lot, a lot is covered in this. Um, you know, we filmed some part of it in London. Uh, they, they, the NFL uh, films and, and, and Prime Video followed me around for a good nine months mm. to different, different venues and different events, and they went back home and talked to a lot of tons of people and, Talked to a lot of Detroit icons about the Lions and what my sort of my era meant. Um, so, uh, but to answer your question, yeah, yeah, there were some there were some emotional parts of it. I assume anytime you start looking back into your life, and I, I, I assume everybody's singing your praises, bro. You deserve it, by the way. You, everybody that was talking about your work ethic and your talent and everything you brought to the team, well deserved, well earned. I can see how that might get a little bit emotional. But let's talk about you going to London and going to England. I read on the bio on the internet uh, about what Bye Bye Barry is, and it says, um, it says, 24 years after the shocking decision to walk away from the sport, NFL Films joined the 55-year-old Sanders. You don't look a day over 35. No, you don't look a day nope. over 35. The 55-year-old Barry Sanders and his four sons on a trip back to England to explore his career. So we were like, was this dude born in England? Like, <laughs> he's the greatest football player of all time from England? And then we started diving into it when you retired – seemingly young it got real loud you moved to england at that point and then in this film i guess you you go back over there and you almost explain to your kids about why you chose to retire for like the first time almost right is that an accurate depiction of why england ties into your story it is other than i i just i went to london for like two weeks after i retired i didn't i didn't officially move to europe or anything like that i just uh <laughs> I just thought it was a good place to get away to, to, to get away from the noise, you know, for a few weeks. I had been there a couple of times before, um, you know, and I knew that, uh, that um, you know, all the kind of fallout that would happen, which did happen, um, all the fallout, I just kind of get away from it. Um, you know, and no, over there, no one really cared, um, you know, but yes, we, um, I, you know, it's funny because I was assuming that, that um, when we were doing this doc, that I would just explain to um, NFL Network and, and Prime Video, kind of you know my trip to London and that sort of thing, and then, and and so and that and I, I was I was thinking that was going to be good enough, but no, they were like, no, we want to go back to we want to go to London, um, and we want we want to walk the streets and we want to see some of those places that uh, where you were and that kind of thing, and so I took. Um, you know, they, they were generous enough to send me and my four sons back over there. And they had them kind of shooting questions at me, um, you know, and that kind of thing. And so they were really kind of almost interviewing my, my, my sons were because my three younger sons, my old, oldest son was probably like four or five when I retired. So he doesn't really remember it. And then my younger sons weren't even born then. Um, so they were so they were just sort of uh, sort of playing the part of you know, the, the media or reporters where they were kind of asking me about my, my retirement. I love that. I cannot wait to hear the answers. I cannot wait to watch. Go ahead, AJ. <clears throat> Barry, we had a, a graphic of your stats from your, <laughs> your last year in college when you won the Heisman, and it's unbelievable what you did game after game after game. Can you take yourself back there? Do you remember at all what your mindset was like every week? Like, did you know, like, when you think about this, this is just unheard of numbers of yards and touchdowns that you were getting. Could you feel any, like, all the pressure or everything mounting up, or what was your mindset back then? AJ, I was young. I was hungry. Um, it was my first year starting. I had, you know, I had had the good fortune of, of uh, playing with a young man who you guys know named Thurman Thomas, fellow Hall of Famer. 
I played behind, behind Thurman for two years. Um, and so it was my chance to sort of come into my own to show what I could do. Um, and so I was, I was just thrilled and excited to be starting, uh, and in that position, um, the previous year I had made all American as a kick returner, um, and had, and, and, and was Thurman's backup and had really, um, a good year, um, backing up Thurman. I, I don't know. I ran for maybe like 600 yards or so maybe. as Thurman's backup and really had some meaningful, um, time as his backup, but that was my, but my junior year, um, I was just ready to go, man. I was I was uh, thrilled about that the prospect of of uh, being able to, to you know, like I said, fill Thurman's shoes and and um, I had I had five fifth year senior offensive linemen and a fifth year senior fullback. Um, there was a was, the wide receiver on that team was a guy who was also a first rounder named Hartley Dykes, but um, but I was just raring to go, man, and and couldn't could not wait. What um, Missouri what just do. beat your ass or what? Missouri just had your number only 154 yards <laughs> and two they touchdowns. Shut me down. They shut no, me they down. Shut me down. <laughs> shut me down. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, all right. I didn't play. I didn't play a lot of that fourth quarter against Missouri, <laughs> but but uh, but no, they did do a good job against me. Yeah. You, no, they didn't. No, <laughs> uh, actually, Barry, nobody did. Yeah. Turns out, turns out that would be a sustained thing that would happen uh, all the way through your time in the NFL. People would play bad for some reason against Barry Sanders. There's some of those highlights where you, oh, hey, oh, buddy, crazy. you still got it? We still got a little quickness? You got to remind the kids every once in a while? Got to remind them. Still got it? There's there's some in there. No, there's some in there, I think. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love that. I hope that we get a chance to see it in the Bye Bye Barry. Let's talk about the brand new Lions. Lions. Yesterday is such a classic, like, the Lions would normally be the Bears in that particular game, where they'd be up two scores with three minutes left, and then somehow, some way, give it to the other team, and all the Lions fans would be miserable for another week, another year, another season. Why do you think this team is so different, and what do you think is actually possible for this brand new Lions team up there in Detroit? Oh yeah, I mean, you don't you don't often overcome you know those kind of uh, turnovers in a game. Uh, and, I, and I don't think maybe the Lions of recent past would have. Um, but I think it just shows you what this this team is ready to do, you know, and, and kind of what their ceiling is. Um, you know, we've been building uh, and, and, you know, fans, most fans understand that we've been building toward this, I think, for maybe three years now, ever since Coach Coach Campbell arrived and instilled a new culture and new expectations, um, you know, but uh, this team – is well positioned, man. I mean, you look you look at the NFC. Obviously, um, the Eagles playing tonight. You know, they're probably the favorite. Um, you look at Dallas. You look at uh, the Niners and a few others in there. But but we're right up there, man. I mean, I think our roster stacks up well with anyone. Um, well, you went you went in uh, to KC and beat the, the the champs the first game of the season. Obviously, they they were a little shorthanded, but still, you won that one. Uh, that's never an easy place to play. And and we've just um, we've really lived up to it all, all season long. If everyone stays healthy, uh, there's no telling how far this thing can go. Um, but just hats off to them. And and um, you know, I mean, you know, we 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 we're just hoping that um, we're just hoping maybe we get a playoff game here in Detroit. Um, you know, which is looking very likely that that could happen. Um, and uh, and hey, um, like I said before. This team can beat anyone on that NFC side, um, you know, so I think they're ready. You think you're going to do any uh, backup singing or performing with Jack Harlow? Ooh. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Thanksgiving to Jack Harlow. I yeah. Sweet. I don't think they have me on the schedule just yet, <laughs> Pat. I don't think I'm on the schedule. <laughs> Oh, we need him. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. Call him now. Pads. pads, Jack. Oh, full pads. Yeah, oh. with the pads back on. Yep. Maybe he. But if I'm asked to do it, if I'm asked to do it, man, absolutely. You know, I'm ready. I'm ready. Jack Harlow, <laughs> Harlow, easy. Yeah. Hey, listen, Barry Sanders <laughs> says I'll, I'll come out and do something. We well, need that to happen. D Bud has a question for you, Barry. <laughs> yeah, I gotta ask you, Barry. Uh, when you stepped away from the game, about 1,500 yards short, how much did you miss it? Was it any eagerness to get back in at any point? And then number two, what went into the decision of let your hometown paper, the Wichita Eagle, break your retirement news? It's, 
the Wichita Eagles. Wichita, Wichita Eagles. Eagles. Hold on, Barry. <laughs> Hold on, Barry. Whoa. Hold on. I, I apologize. Hey, y'all, 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 what the y'all hell? Know I, y'all know how I am with some of these. UConn, <laughs> what the hell AJ, happened? AJ, what the hell? What's so funny, AJ? Yeah, yeah. Wichita? 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 <laughs> Wichita? The, ba- <laughs> the real place. The basketball school. Wichita. <laughs> there you go. Oh. The Shockers, The Wichita Eagles. Wichita. The Shockers. There you go. We Shockers. We Shockers. Yeah. But, Wichita. But no, they ask question. I like it. Jeez Louise. Hey, can, hey, can we let the lady right, answer right, right. the question? You let the Wichita Eagles do the thing. <laughs> yeah. And when that son bitch was flying, you know. <laughs> no, but. but um, That was awesome. That would get there. <laughs> I, I, you know, I mean, it was, it was, did I miss it? And I, I was I aware of the 1500 yards? I mean, I understood at some point that I was always going to miss the game um, and that I was never going to replace what football was. I mean, it's a very unique thing. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there just aren't that many things like it. Um, and so, um, and I knew that, you know, at that point, Walter, Walter uh, Payton, um, who I was just 1,500 yards away from his record. You know, he was literally fighting for his life, you know, with that, um, with the, with the uh, liver uh, disease that he was, that, that he had come down with, um, you know, so, but I, so I was aware of that, but I understood that I was just in that, you know, that's just where I was, you know, I, I know for me that um, the decision had pretty bit, much been made um, and I was okay with, you know, I was okay with um, the experience that I had in the NFL um, that that it was unique, that it was special. Um, hey, look, there's some things that I wish I could have been able to do, but that's okay. Um, and then why the Eagle? Well, I had a long time, a lifelong friend who was a writer who worked for the Eagle at that time, and he ha- actually helped me kind of draft the retirement statement. Um, uh, and so uh, and so and so that's kind of why and how I ended up sort of working with the Wichita Eagle. Is that a childhood friend, a guy who I actually, you know, I'm friends with even to this day, but he was a, he was a writer on staff. He wasn't a sports writer, but he was a writer. Um, and so it just something I felt most comfortable with, you know, dealing with uh, a lifelong friend. I think your loyalty to Wachita is really <laughs> admirable. <laughs> I cannot. Sure. You gave a great answer there, but yeah. there's nobody's going to be able to hear it because all they're going to be sitting at home thinking is, did this dude just say Wachita? For Wichita. Kidding me? Hey, thank you. Should have called it the Eagle. Hey, that yep. was a great question. Yep, was. That was a great question. Great I didn't know that. I got I, know I, that. I listened to the answer. I heard. Yeah, it was a great answer, Barry. We appreciate you. That loyalty, though, is one of the reasons why everybody that's ever met you and played alongside you loved you. And I think that's the biggest compliment that you could ever possibly receive. Can't wait to see more of that tomorrow. AJ has a question for you. Barry, watching some of those clips of you playing on the uh, you know the old school AstroTurf, it's scary to think of he trying to tackle you ever on any surface there is. But would you have liked to play on grass more or a lot of grass? I know there's obviously all a big push in the NFL right now to try to get all grass in all the stadiums. What do you think about that? Well, I like – I mean, I love certain grass stadiums like, you know, Tampa, um, <laughs> which that, that was probably my favorite place to play uh, outside of the Silverdome. <laughs> Brother. Um, you know. And the turf could be the, the turf could be a little tough. I mean, as you can see, you know, the Silverdome turf was pretty friendly to me. I'd say, um, you know, and and that kind of thing. But but uh, oh, if, you know, it was pretty hard on your joints and what have you. Um, and I know there's discussion about you know discussion about uh, changing um, back to grass for a lot of stadiums. I, I think what whatever is the safest for the players. Um, I haven't, you know, I've, I've heard different things. I don't know that I've seen, you know, firm data on, you know, which one is the safest you would, you would think grass, um, you would think grass, natural grass would be, or at least as much grass as, as, as possible, uh, logistically and, and, um, and that kind of thing. But the, whatever, whatever is safest for the players is, is what I'm for. Hey, sorry for the reaction while you're talking there. Have you watched filming yourself? You were hilarious to watch. <laughs> you were running at a different speed than everybody else. I mean, that was a different. That's crazy. Are they speeding with AI? Oh, yeah. With AI. Yeah. And like, it feels like they're speeding one human up, but he's wearing 20 and white, and everybody else is running at a different pace. Did you have another gear? What, 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 did you have a visor on there for a little bit? What was the visor era? I didn't know that. I did. I did wear a visor because I, I got poked in the eye um, at some point, you know, by by um, 
you know, actually a young man who actually played for the Packers. Uh, oh, AJ, you know, not oh. Bring, scumbag! Not to bring up no, not to, not to bring up any any you know any rivalries or anything like that. But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I got poked in the eye at, at some point, so I did I did wear a visor for a year or two. Yeah, it looked clean. Imagine with a tinted visor. Oh, oh I mean, too much. Oh, in those new Lions uniforms. Yep. Oh, yeah. MCDC running out the pack. The Lions, oh, Lions oh, Barry Lions. Sanders right there next to him. Oh, one more, one more game. One, one more, more game. game. One more game. game. Yeah, you got one more, and you for sure. And I know the Lions still got you on a contract. We read about that as well. Yeah. I think that's going to get talked about. Uh, Connor has a question for you, Barry. Yeah, Barry, obviously you are one of the goats of the running back community. Do a lot of young guys coming into the NFL reach out to you, or do you reach out to some of the young guys in the NFL, just kind of give them tips on how to go from you know a great – college running back to a great NFL running back? And if not, have you had any conversations with Jameer Gibbs kind of on his own? Because he started off a little slow with very high expectations and now has really come on and been an absolute stud for the Lions. Oh, yeah. I mean, just in recent years, you know, I've, I've bumped into guys, you know, like a Jonathan Taylor or a Christian McCaffrey. Um, you know, had, I, I talked to Josh, uh, Josh Jacobs, a few weeks ago when the Lions played them, uh, um, uh, Saquon Barkley, um, guys like that. I, not not really any heavy pointers, just good luck, you know, keep doing what you're doing. It's, it's, it's definitely a tough game and and um, that uh, I feel like, you know, their, their skill set definitely translates on this level. Um, and then with Jameer, I've had a chance to talk to him a little bit um, just to encourage him. And, and I mean, you know, the kid uh, – the kid is exciting. Um, he's everything that I think we were hoping for. And, and um, when we picked him number one as number one draft pick, um, you know, you see him making big play after big play every every week. Whenever he gets the ball, you know, he uh, he looks like he's he's um, you know he's 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 uh, ready, re raring and re ready to go. Um, and and um, so yeah, he's. He's everything we had hoped for um, and, and being just that kind of back who can make things happen. Um, his speed, you see his speed there. He's breaking tackles, which that's probably the hardest thing when you talk about making that jump from college to pro is, 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 is this running back going to be able to go absorb contact, um, get those yards after contact, um, which I, I feel like I see AJ kind of cringing right now yeah. as I'm wow, as I'm just, speaking and saying. It's got corny, got corny too. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, yeah. So so I've had a chance to talk to those guys, um, you know, and and at least just you know encourage them. But not, you know, I, I not necessarily any heavy coaching heavy coaching pointers. You should watch film with them and just say it pays to be faster than everybody. Look, watch <laughs> yeah. this one here. Watch this one <laughs> where I'm running uh, in six gear and these guys all have just four gears in the car. You see, that's uh, that's a little bit different. Look at your ass pulling Ooh. away from these people. Guys, pulling up. You got guys pulling up with hammies chasing you too. <laughs> I mean, you were just disappearing from these. See ya. I am out of here. Over. Bye bye. Bye. That had to feel so good. <laughs> that had to feel so Look at that guy. <laughs> we got a guy that they don't have. What a good time this had to be. Now, there's something allegedly coming out of tomorrow's Bible. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Not no even chance. a flag. Not even a flag in flag football there. Mm -hmm. Not even a. Now, here's the tin advisor if we need to look at one. Ooh. That was sweet. That yeah, does look sweet. I get a shoulder pass. Yeah, you, yeah. you're ready for some contact, huh? Let's go ahead and put some massive. <laughs> need them. Give these offensive linemen shoulder pads on. There's something coming out of this Bye Bye Barry tomorrow uh, that we had learned about. Joe Montana allegedly reached out to the Lions because he wanted to play football alongside you. Is that – are we reading accurately? And uh, we did some research, okay? We did some research. The quarterbacks that were on the um, – on the Lions at the time were Eric Kramer, Rodney Pete, and Andre Ware. Obviously, incredible football players. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, not Joe Montana. <laughs> no. Not Joe Montana. I don't think anybody would say. But allegedly, the Lions said, nah, he's too old. He would go on to lead the Chiefs to the AFC Championship that year. Yeah. And he went on to play there. Is that true? And did you know that in the time? Or when did you find that out? I found that out a lot later. And the interesting thing is because is that um, I believe – his last game with the Niners was against one of his, his either his last game or one of his last games uh, with the Niners was against us on Monday Night Football, and he literally lit us up. He li absolutely lit us up, uh, Joe Montana did before he went to, uh, to the Chiefs. But I would I would have learned years later that he was interested, 
and coming to the Lions. Can you believe that? <laughs>